Take a look at this. These are the pictures that Vladimir Putin wants Russians to see as he wages an illegal, misguided, and increasingly costly war in Ukraine. That is Putin himself holding a MAGA-style stadium rally in Moscow this morning to galvanize Russian support for what he's euphemistically calling a special military operation, but which the rest of the world knows as the mass slaughter of civilians. The rally was meant to celebrate the also illegal annexation of Crimea eight years ago. But of course, it was just more pro-war propaganda, carefully staged with banners touting the lie of the so-called denazification of Ukraine. Despite the crowd's apparent enthusiasm, Many attendees said they had been pressured into attending by their employers, according to the BBC. Likewise, students said they were given a day off from lectures if they attended. And some didn't even know that the event was dedicated in part to supporting the war in Ukraine. Putin's big performance also hit a snag when state TV channels abruptly cut away from his speech to show an earlier performance by a musical artist who's sort of a, a Russian nationalist ripoff of Bruce Springsteen. This comes as Kremlin propagandists are working overtime to sell the war to the Russian people, while also minimizing its significance. And they're using extremists from this country as proxies to bolster their message. For instance, they've been repeatedly broadcasting the words of House Republican Madison Cawthorn, who called President Zelensky a thug in a recently unearthed video. And they continue to embrace Tucker Carlson, who's emerged as America's most visible champion of their cause. Carlson is such a hit among Putin supporters that a young security worker in Siberia is translating and dubbing his show for a Russian audience, receiving 24 million hits. But the bigger problem is what Russian TV doesn't cover, given what's really going on. As Masha Gessen wrote in The New Yorker earlier this month, there is no ongoing live coverage, no acknowledgement that what's happening is extraordinary, even as Russian bombs fall on Ukraine's residential areas and the Russian economy enters a tailspin. Gessen writes... The nice thing about a war that's not a war is that it's easy to look away. With me now is Masha Gessen, staff writer for The New Yorker and author of Surviving Autocracy. And Masha, I know that uh, you recently came back from Russia, and I am dying to know what you saw, the folks you talked to, what they know about what's happening in Ukraine. I think maybe it's more important to think about what they don't know. They don't know that it is a massive war operation. And, uh, you know, what, what's what's really striking is that even people who are, and, the, and the, this is a vanishingly small number, right, but even the vanishingly small number of people who are still consuming independent media, which have been blocked by Russian authorities, it takes a huge effort to use, use the virtual private network to use uh, to, to see uh, independent media. Even they don't quite get the picture that television viewers in the West get, right? There isn't uh, as much footage, there isn't as much detail of the just, you know, just, just this unending carnage. And if people watch Russian TV, which most Russians do, most Russians have, at least have it in the background, there are two things that are happening. One is that they're being told that Russia is waging a special military operation to restore peace or to uh, to put a stop to violence or to denazify Ukraine, depending on who you listen to. And but but the biggest thing is how they're being told this, which is in this very sort of routine tone. The newscasts at the top of the hour are still five or six minutes, right? Uh, you hear a story about um, Ukraine, and then the next story is a Romanian uh, fighter plane w uh, went down while on a rescue mission. Seven people died. And so it's in the context of things that happen in the rest of the world all the time. There isn't this, you know, the, the sense that you get in the rest of the world, which is that the world is on fire, the one place you don't get it is in Russia. And, you know, it's interesting. In your piece, you, you talk about, you know, someone being arrested on the street and people just, like, not even noticing it, right? And, and this sort of everything is sort of blanditized, where no one really sees what's happening around them. Um, you know, I, and I was just talking with, with my team earlier today that it, it is as if, you know, if, if Fox News was the only thing you could watch on TV, there was nothing else, well, a lot of people here wouldn't know what was going on in Ukraine, right? They would see a certain blinkered view that was what Fox News told them, that's what's happening. If that was it, if there was no other option, that's kind of the way I kind of think of it. Is is that what we should think, that essentially people are being fed a very selective view of the world, and so for the most part, lots of people believe it? 
I think yes, for the most part, lots of people believe it. But of course, imagine that you're watching Fox News and then you're going out and seeing empty store shelves, right? Um, things that were there yesterday are no longer there. Like today, uh, social media that are still coming out of Russia are showing uh, you know, shelves that are entirely empty where um, uh, where sanitary products used to be, right? Which is which is such an essential sort of element of of human dignity that that came with life after the Soviet Union and that dis, is disappearing again. And right now you're showing all these stores that have shuttered, right? From IKEA to McDonald's to H and M and Zara, not just the luxury goods um, that you're showing, but but all the things that sort of were made up the landscape of everyday life. All of that is disappearing, but then when you watch Russian TV, what you're hearing is that the special military operation, but also that the government is taking measures to stabilize the economic situation. It's just another small period of hardship, and we're going to recover. And Russians who have survived a lot of periods of hardship, right, kind of figure, okay, this will this will end too. Then I guess the question would be. Is there some way it's breaking through? Because, you know, we, we sort of tend to now think of the world as sort of, you know, the people who are in urban centers, you know, more educated people, people who have lots of social media, have more information. And we are seeing people using Telegram and, you know, people using those kind of ways to get information. Is, is there enough of a critical mass of that information getting through when even their ambassador to the U.N. is saying the, vision, the, the images we all see are fake. See, they're, they're claiming in the U.N. that those things are fake. Is there enough social media breakthrough to change anything or to destabilize in any way the Russian regime, the Putin regime? In a word, no. Uh, I mean, for, uh, for two reasons. One is that there's not enough. Uh, they're, they're just, you know, they've blocked Facebook. They've, blo uh, they've blocked Instagram. They're about to block YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Right. So there just isn't uh, there isn't the social media on which messages could get through. But more than that, um, people don't believe what they see when they do accidentally come across it. And we're seeing that from from people who are communicating, trying to communicate with their relatives, uh, Ukrainians who are trying to communicate with their relatives in Russia, who are saying, you know, that's fake. Uh, you're lying when they're talking to their own family members who are actually living through it. But more than anything else. This assumption that the truth can somehow destabilize the Putin regime fundamentally misunderstands the nature of the regime. It's a totalitarian society at this point. It is a matter of survival for Russians to buy into the picture of the universe that state television is broadcasting to them. And by buy into, I don't mean to perform something that they don't believe. I mean to actually give up the ability to form their own opinion, right? So this idea that you could, you could, if somehow you just got somebody to see something, it would magically uh, do something to the Putin regime is a basic misunderstanding of how the country works. You know, it, what you've described to me sounds a lot like North Korea, um, and it's it's pretty frightening. Uh, Masha Gessen, thank you. I hope you will come back very soon because I have so many more questions. I could do this all, all, all night. Um, thank you so much, really appreciate you.